Hi there, and welcome to this month's episode of our DNI vodcast, addressing the elephant in the room. I'm Lindsay Bridges, and during this series, I will be exploring DHL's supply chain UK and Ireland's journey on our DNI agenda, addressing a range of diversity topics through discussions with colleagues from across our supply chain business. In this episode today, I am thrilled to be talking to Javier Bilbao, who is the CEO for our Latin America business, and he has global board responsibility for DNI. I'm also talking to Roxy Corp. She's a VPHR for within our UKI business, and she's taken on a stretch assignment to lead the DNI agenda globally. So, Javier, let's start with you. Why did you decide to step up and lead this for the division? Well, Lindsay, um, this is a topic that I feel is very close to my heart. Um, I have personally seen how uh, dealing with diversity and inclusion topics in the right way has had a very positive impact around uh, different parts of the organization. And me being uh, a diversity myself and having experienced the good and the bad, um, the good when you know, you feel comfortable, you're out there and, and uh, things are working in the right way. And the bad when you're concerned about the impact and you don't want to disclose too much, etc. or whatever, you have your own um, things in the head. And I think that brings uh, a good experience to uh, work in these areas, bring a different perspective, my own perspective, uh, but definitely not one that comes from a majority of you. That's great, Javier. Thank you for sharing that. Javier, are you are you happy to share a little bit more about your own diversity with us? Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm gay. I'm uh, married with my husband. That we've been together 16, 17 years. Uh, we have two kids together, and uh, you know it wasn't always easy. Um, it it did take me quite a while uh, to be comfortable with the fact that I was that way. Uh, it wasn't until I was 30 years old that I was, you know, <laughs> honest with myself. And it took me a few more years to be totally transparent about it at work. And I remember throughout this whole period, how I was always look at signs and evidence elsewhere that it could be okay to be myself. And uh, I think it's great to be able to show to all those other many various diversity types that exist out there that uh, no matter what those particular characteristics are, they will be welcome and we will be uh, just focusing on what the true contribution from those people are to uh, our work environment, et cetera, and not any other um, uh, particular characteristics. Thanks, Javier, and thanks you for sharing you know, so openly a little bit about your personal situation. So, Roxy, let me turn to you now. Um, you've taken this on as a stretch assignment on top of your existing role. And what motivated you to do that? Well, yes, it certainly is a stretch assignment, but simply just to be able to make a difference, Lindsay, as much as possible in a global organisation with so many dimensions. And making a difference is important to me, given that I've been with the organisation for 20 years and being of Asian background and female, I've not had any role models to aspire to. I struggled to find someone to aspire to, someone that looked like me and may have faced some similar experiences whilst developing their career. So it's an area that I'm passionate about and one that I'd like to influence as part of the overall DNI mm -hmm. strategy. Brilliant. Thanks, Roxy. And, and that point around role models, I think, is really valid and one of the reasons why we are really embarking on this agenda. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. If I turn now and talk for a moment about supply chain's global DNI strategy, can you walk us through the key pillars of that? Of course. Um, so we have six pillars. Um, uh, let's start with uh, visible leadership. Uh, we want to make sure that there is a strong message uh, from the top um, throughout all the different levels of management with uh, strong uh, endorsement from uh, all the key management, sending the right messages, making sure that but we're all behind this. And then the next element is inclusive leadership, which is a three-stage programme, bronze, silver and gold phases. And that's aimed at our 20,000 global management population to help that raise awareness and educate this population so they understand the role they play in DNI. Exactly. And to complement that message from the top, we need to make sure that we also have the employee voice. Um, and we are working on this through a very deep um, DNI survey in which we've touched um, all the levels in the organization, getting direct anonymous feedback 
from uh, about 30,000 employees and trying to, through that, being able to better design what are the next steps that we need to be taking. And then we continue to focus on women in leadership. So across all our regions, we've set a target to achieve 30% females in senior leadership roles by 2025. We've got a mini framework to address some of the key areas, which includes looking at our entry level talent, developing our existing female talent, and ensuring that we've got a culture that supports the females in our workplaces. And then finally, how we showcase our female talent externally, but then turns into feeding the pipeline again. And then we're going to celebrate diversity. It's important that our people feel uh, the energy about it and they share their experiences and they make it visible to other parts of the organization. We started with the I Am Diversity campaign with board members talking about specific elements of themselves that make them also diverse. And we're seeing that now being replicated with a lot of enthusiasm from uh, many parts of the organization, culminating with a terrific uh, diversity week in which we heard so many testimonials from uh, people all across uh, the globe. It was really, really encouraging. And then the final area is um, making sure we have equity in our processes. So we've just kick-started a global project looking at our recruitment and selection process with the aim of removing any bias that may exist within it. And that's really about creating a level playing field for applicants, specifically from minority groups, to successfully secure a role in DHL. And we recently carried out a similar exercise for our graduate recruitment um, process in the UK. And by simply making a few changes here and there, we increased our offers to black and ethnic minority candidates to 34% and our female candidates to 41%. So with great results. So what I can see and hear there is a, a very holistic global strategy that goes from clear leadership and direction at the top, the engagement of lots of colleagues to get involved in this agenda and tell their own personal stories, through to some of the more targets or, or technical or training aspects that you've talked around, around your education, awareness and delivery. So very comprehensive. What aspect of the strategy really excites you the most? The part that excites me the most is just seeing how willing everybody is to participate and engage in this aspect. It was an element that for a time, it felt like, you know, it was a nice to have, uh, we're being a good company, we want to engage with more people. But the moment that we really took this seriously and started to engage at a, at a more intense level with uh, the organization, the response from all the different levels, but particularly at the, uh, you know, the larger, um, you know, close to the operations, how people are really willing to share their experiences and, and to engage in all the activities that we're putting in place. It's really rewarding. It's really impressive. And Roxy, from your side, what really, what, you know, what makes you get out of bed in the morning and be excited about diversity and inclusion? It's such a massive agenda and um, no one conversation is ever the same and there's so many different facets to it. But I think, what to build on what have you said, listening to our colleagues and them sharing their experiences and seeing DHL through their eyes has been really exciting. And the fact that we've now created momentum and so many of our colleagues want to get involved and share their experiences is just it's just great. We've not really had to push it either. So clearly they've got a channel and they're using it, which is really good to see. Mm. I think it's fantastic and it does sound like we are definitely pushing at an open door and people are really wanting this and valuing it. But if I just think, you know, tackling diversity on a, on a global scale is, is really challenging. Different cultures, different norms, different legislation, even in some countries. So what's the approach to that and how do we, how do we deal with that across such a, a wide variety of countries and cultures? So apart from the challenge of different time zones that in impact engagement at a regional level that you didn't tell me about, Lindsay, <laughs> this is really about listening to our colleagues through our global task force, our regional steering teams. They're the ones that know best what's going to work within their regions. So a recent survey helped inform what, we, what was important to our colleagues. And whilst it's having that global agenda, it's making sure that we can localise it and tailor it to the needs of that part of the organisation. There is the legislative restrictions, absolutely. Um, so we can't really get a true employee profile, a global employee profile, but it's something that we are working on. And it's not always appropriate to talk about certain diversity lines in certain countries. 
So that's something else that we need to address. But but certainly we're well on the way to, to doing that. It's interesting that we have a, a kind of a global framework from what you're saying within the ability to localise that. And I think that's really important for any large organisation embarking on this agenda. It's not a one size fits all, right? Yeah, absolutely not. Yeah. So if I think for a moment, I mean, let's face it, the current workforce across DHL supply chain is predominantly male. And in, in many countries, it's often white, um, particularly in the UK, obviously. So how do we ensure that that majority group feel engaged by this agenda? I mean, I hear concerns sometimes from, from some of our male colleagues here in the UK that, you know, females are getting special treatment or, you know, even females who think, well, I don't want any special treatment. I don't want that development program. I, I want to be treated the same as everyone else. How do we, um, what's your view on that? How do we deal with it? Yeah. This is a very, uh, very good question, Lindsay, and, and it's true. There is a there is an element of concern around that that we're hearing. I, I think it's in general everything that we're doing around diversity and inclusion is kind of uncharted territory. Uh, we are building knowledge and 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 uh, tools and and resources as as we go along. And um, one thing that I think we're growing to understand better is that uh, we don't probably need so many programs to push women uh, and give them that kind of unique, different uh, uh, opportunity or, or, or training. Or in the end, it seems like we're asking for even an extra effort from our females to uh, be able to then be promoted, et cetera. I think there's, there's a lot of work that we need to do as an organization, many, well, most organizations, they were designed with the mindset, of, by and with the mindset of men, of a particular type of man. And what I think we need to uh, share and, and, and help people understand is that by changing that uh, mindset, by creating equity across the organization where everybody has the same opportunity to grow, develop, et cetera, everybody gains. Uh, I think there's a lot of stereotypes around what is the right type of management style that needs to be in place. There is a certain expectations on the role of males and females that I don't think live up to the realities of today. And a lot of men will get much better quality of life by letting go of certain ways of acting or, or uh, you know, staying long hours, uh, never taking care of their kids because there's somebody else out there that does it. While many men actually want to do that, I want to do that. I, I do get involved uh, big time with the uh, personal life of my kids. And uh, I think also there is so much to gain through doing it right with uh, diversity, inclusion and equity that we, the companies that do this first, they will grow more than the others. There will be opportunities for everybody to grow men, white, uh, of different races, females, it doesn't matter. Uh, if we are successful in creating that equity across the organization, all of us will gain with that. Yeah, the, I mean, the traditional stereotypes are changing, aren't they? Many um, when you work, many mums want to work and many dads want more work-life balance. And, and that's all changed to maybe what it was many, many years ago. And I think that's part of it. But I really liked your point on, on equity and particularly on growth. You know, if we're successful as an organisation and we grow, there will be many opportunities for everyone, right? Exactly. I think we're seeing a lot of evidence in many studies and, and analysis of what is happening around diversity and inclusion when it's managed correctly how that attracts better talent, retains people, and it, it enhances creativity. And in general, there's very objective measures that demonstrate that companies are more successful when they manage diversity and inclusion in the right way. Yeah, and it's not only is it there's a business case for it, which I totally accept. I mean, from my perspective, it's kind of just the right thing to do. And I think we all want everybody to, to feel comfortable coming to work every day and being themselves at work every day and bringing their best to work every day, right? And the more that we uh, work on these areas, the you know, the more that we expand the possibilities. It's not just this like A to five, or for many males, A to eight. And uh, you have to be present for work to be delivered, uh, which deters so many people who are not able to follow that standard from 
not just being um, present and, and evolving and growing with the organization, but from being focused and being able to continue uh, to contribute with the right ideas, etc. So let's just change gear a little bit. And I want to talk about targets and target setting. And I know that as, uh, as Deutsche Post DHL, in fact, as well as our DHL supply chain business, we have clear um, KPI targets in place for women in leadership. So is there a plan to expand that to other areas? Yes, there is, Lindsay, and it's something that we're exploring as we speak. So we're already measuring things like our inclusive leadership curriculum and how many managers and leaders are going through that. And we're looking at not just internal data around promotion, succession planning and so on, but how our external campaigns are really supporting our agenda to attract more females. But we'd love to measure other areas, such as the number of minority groups, employees from minority groups joining our organisation, the promotions, the shortlisting of applicants, etc. We know we're restricted by legislation, something we touched on earlier, but we are working on at least gathering as much data as we can from the countries that we can. Like, for example, in the UK, we're looking at a, a project to do that. And that will really inform some of the work that we need to do going forward on the d agenda. So you both talked earlier a little bit about some of the training and the very large number of managers that we're aspiring to put through the, the training program. That's clearly a long-term plan and a long-term investment. So what will success look like for you at the end of that plan? And how long do you think it's going to take? Yeah, we're talking about a plan that will take between three and four years as a minimum. Uh, you know, we're talking about a cultural change. We want to not just have people go through a program. We want people to reflect on what they're learning. We want people to practice what they're doing, et cetera. And the aim in the end is to have uh, a whole management uh, population that really leaves and breathes the uh, uh, diversity and inclusion topics and that drive an environment of equity in, in everything that we do. The, uh, this can't be a program led by the head office or something that has a group of people behind pushing for it. It needs to be something that the whole organization em uh, embraces. And that's what we aspire to see happening. Uh, an organization that is very diverse and that thrives in that diversity with examples everywhere of, uh, you know, different types of people. Um, you know, when you look at pictures that you start seeing much more diversity than what we see today. And obviously, that we see that impacting in the results of the organization. That's a massive um, aspiration, isn't it, to have, have this grow organically as part of the culture. But I, I very much take your point. If it just becomes a, a training program, it's not going to deliver that longer term goal, is it? Exactly. It needs to be understood, embraced and uh, um, pushed forward by the organization as a whole. And that's why I think we, we were both highlighting that as the part that excites us the most, that the moment that we've gone full forward, uh, working on these elements with the organization, the way that the organization has responded has been extremely positive. So I'm, I'm very confident that we're going to make great progress in the coming years. So I have a final quick question for both of you. Um, if you had a message for anyone who feels that they really don't see how they're getting involved in this agenda, they're struggling to engage with it because they feel they don't have a lived experience of being diverse themselves, what would that message be? Uh, so if for me, it's about listening. Just listen to the colleagues around you and absorb the diversity that each and every one of them brings. Embrace the uniqueness of every individual. Be empathetic and be an ally to show your support to those around you so they can be themselves at work. That's what I'd say. Brilliant, thank you, Roxy. Those are great messages there around listening and empathy. And Javier, from you? Yeah, I could question the main assumption that um, so many people may not have a lived experience. Um, I could suggest people to think of a moment in which they felt they didn't fit in with the organization, that they felt that they would not be successful for a particular reason. And that would be a good channel to uh, feel how others feel uh, often in the diversity space. And generally, just look around, think about uh, uh, relatives, mothers, daughters, sisters, gay cousins. Uh, look around and just realize uh, there's much more diversity. Get in touch, um, put in your shoes or put in their shoes, and uh, that will tell you a lot about how you can help on this. 
Fabulous, Javier and Roxy, thank you both very much. I mean, we've talked today about the, the global strategy and the various elements of that. I think all three of us have talked about the power of storytelling, of listening to colleagues and of colleague engagement and genuine colleague desire to get involved in this agenda. And that in itself is what I heard you say will sustain this for a longer term culture change within our business. And then you've talked a little bit about some of the specifics that we're looking at in terms of targets and, um, and training. And then you've closed off really nicely with, you know, put yourself in the shoes of others, listen, be in, empathetic. And don't forget that actually that moment in time where you felt a little uncomfortable, that's when you had a little bit of a sense of maybe what some of our diversity line colleagues are feeling. So thank you both very much. I really appreciate your input uh, on the episode today. And um, let's, uh, let's close that off for today. So that's it for today, folks. Thank you very much for listening in and watch out for our next episode when I will be talking to colleagues from within our business about their own personal diversity lines and the challenges that they faced and overcome. And I'm pleased as ever to let you know you can watch us on YouTube or listen in on Spotify or iTunes.